Palm Sunday. Tradition versus law. I'll say it again. Palm Sunday. Tradition versus the law. Let's get started. Before we go into the lesson, I want to encourage everyone to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button. And if you would like to get notifications of new teachings that we upload, uh, just hit the notification button below. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Again, our lesson for today is Palm Sunday, tradition versus the law. Matthew's chapter 15, verse two, and it reads, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not with their hands when they eat bread. Let me read that one more time. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? They wash not their hands when they eat bread bread. Now understand this is the Pharisees confronting Christ over tradition versus the law because Christ's disciples, Lamad, they did not wash their hands. And so I want you to pay attention to this verse here. You see here it says what? The tradition of the elders. Let's go to the next verse and we'll tie this together. But he, this is Ha Mashayak, answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of Yahweh Alahayim by your tradition? Now notice, the Pharisees is concerned about the tradition of the elders, but here we see. Ha Mashayak is pointing the elders to the commandments of Yah. Let's go to the next verse. Verse four, for Yahweh Alahayim saying, honor Kabed, or excuse me, Kabad, thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Verse five, but ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or mother, it is a gift by whosoever might be profited by me. Verse six, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of Yahweh Alahayim of none effect by your tradition. And so what we're doing here, I'm using this text to draw parallel to what we see happening with Palm Sunday. We see in this text that the Pharisees are focused on tradition of the elders, in other words, tradition of man versus the commandments of Yah. And we see this happening right now. More are focused on tradition of man versus the commandment of Yah. So let's deal with the actual commandment that Ha Mashayak is referring to. This is the law of washing hands. This is coming from Exodus chapter 30, verse 18 through 21. And this is what it says. Verse 18. Thou shalt also make a laver of brass and his foot also of brass to wash with thaw. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle, a hall of the congregation, Mawa'ad, and the altar, Ma Zabak. And thou shalt put water therein. Verse 19 For Aharon and his sons. Banai shall wash Rakat their hands, Yad, and their feet, Ragal there at. Now you notice here in this text, you see Aaron, Aharon, and you see his sons. 
These are the Levitical priests. So I want you to make a note of that. Verse 20, when they go into the tabernacle, a hall of the congregation, ma wa'ad, they shall wash with water that they die not or when they come near to the altar, ma zabak, to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto Yahweh. Verse 21, so they shall wash Rakat their hands, Yad, and their feet. Ragal, that they die not, and it shall be a statue forever to them, even to him and to his seed, Zara, throughout their generation. So this law, this commandment of washing the hands and the feet, this is a law that is given to the Levitical priesthood. So again, Aharon and his sons shall wash their hands and feet. That's the commandment. The second major piece of furniture in the courtyard of the tabernacle was the bronze wash basin. The bronze wash basin played a very significant role in the priest's service to Yah. The bronze basin was to be placed between the tabernacle and the altar of burnt offering. Before a priest could go into the holy place and most holy place, his first order of business was at the altar of burnt offering. See, the bronze wash basin was the next step in following the path of holiness of entering into the presence of Yah. The sole purpose of the bronze wash basin was for the priests to wash their hands and their feet. Let's go to another law of washing hands. This is coming from Leviticus chapter 15, verse 2 and 3. Verse 2 reads, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When any man hath a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue he is unclean. Now keep in mind where it says here, a running issue out of his flesh. This is referring to discharge discharge out of his private area, his reproductive organ. This is referring to venereal diseases. So again, let me read it again. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when any man hath a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue, he is unclean. Verse three, and this shall be his uncleanness in his issue, whether his flesh run with his issue or his flesh be stopped from his issue. It is his uncleanness. Now, understand this chapter in the chapter after this is dealing with discharge from a man's uh, private area, but it also addresses the woman as well. And it's not only referring to how to uh, cleanse your hands, but also your entire body, including your clothing, your household. So the law of washing hands and feet were for the priests, as we highlighted in the previous scriptures. And the other law that I just referred to, I made reference to the law of washing hands involves a man and a woman who is experiencing discharges. So washing hands before eating is a tradition or a, should I say, a man-made law that has absolutely no penalty of death to it. This is a tradition that the Pharisees were uh, pushing, soliciting as if it's a commandment. And this is why ha Mashayak. This is why he said to them that they are through their traditions is causing the law to be ineffective. OK, 
confusing the people, which leads me to Palm Sunday, because this is the exact thing that we see happening with this holiday, Palm Sunday. So the question is, what is Palm Sunday? So let's go to our foundational scripture, which is John chapter 12, verse 12 through 19. And it reads verse 12 on the next day, much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Yahawashai Ha Mashayak was coming to Yarashalam. Verse 13 took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Quara, Hosanna, blessed Barak is the king, Ha Malak of Israel, Yasharaal, that cometh in the name Hasham of the Lord, Yahweh Alahayim. And so they took branches of palm trees. So let's deal with the palm tree real quick because there are different types of palm trees. The date palm. This is coming from the Hallman Illustrated Bible Dictionary. Palms, date palms, was among the earliest cultivated trees. 5,000 year old inscriptions from Mesopotamia gives instructions for their cultivation. Palms are characteristics of oases and warded places. And as you see, it gives some scriptural references such as Exodus chapter 15, verse 27, Numbers chapter 33, verse 9. The fruit of the date palm is highly valued by desert travelers since it may be consumed fresh or else dried or made into cakes for a portable and easily storageable food. Kind of like chicken from a sense of how easy and convenient it is to pack up and travel with. You can eat chicken, whether it's hot or cold. Jericho was known as the city of palms. The judge Deborah rendered her decisions under a palm bearing her name. And understand the palm was a symbol of both beauty and prosperity. Thus, Images of palms were used in the decoration of the temple and were part of Ezekiel's vision of the new temple. And palms were used in the construction of the booths for the festival of booths. So is this the origin of Palm Sunday? Is this the origin of Palm Sunday? And I'm going to say no. Now we see scripture here with the Israelites waving palms, but they were not celebrating Palm Sunday. Here's the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition of Palm Sunday. Let's go to it. It says the Sunday before Easter celebrated in commemoration of Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It goes on to say, first known use of Palm Sunday before the 12th century in the meaning defined above. So we see a date here. It says before the 12th century. So now we have the 12th century in which we can use as a baseline. So we have the 12th century it says before the 12th century. Let's go to the Encyclopedia Britannica and let's see what they have to say about Palm Sunday. It reads Palm Sunday, also called Passion Sunday in the Christian tradition, the first day of the Holy Week and the Sunday before Easter commemorating Jesus Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It is associated in many churches with the blessings and procession of palms. In other words, leaves of the date palm or twig from locally available trees. 
These special ceremonies were taking place towards the end of the fourth century. And this article goes on to say the earliest evidence of the ceremonies is found in the Babio Sacramentary. In other words, the eighth century during the Middle Ages, the ceremony for the blessing of the palms was elaborate. The procession began in one church, went to a church in which the palms were blessed. And so let me reiterate this again. It says the earliest evidence of the ceremonies is found in the Babio Sacramentary. In other words, the eighth century. Let's go back to this article here. It says the palms are often taken home by the members of the congregation to serve as sacramentals. In other words, sacred signs of the sacraments, and some of them are burned the following year to serve as the ashes for Ash Wednesday. So again, let me reiterate that point. And some of them, in other words, these palm leaves are burnt the following year to serve as the ashes for Ash Wednesday. Let's deal with Ash Wednesday. I'm not going to go too deep into it. Um, I encourage you guys to view the video that's on the channel that deals with Lent and Ash Wednesday and, of course, Mardi Gras. So Ash Wednesday, this allegedly Christian festival was taken from Roman paganism, which in turn took it from Vedic India. Ashes were called the seed of the fire god Agni with power to absolve all sin. Even if a man does a thousand things that one not ought to do by bathing in ashes, he will cause all of that to be burnt to ashes as fire burns a forest with its energy. Another source said ashes stood for the purifying blood of Shiva in which one could bathe away sins as Christians bathe in the blood of the lamb. So the God that you see here, Shiva and Agni, these are Hindu gods and goddesses. So let's deal with this Vedic God, Agni. Let's deal with this Vedic God, Agni. Agni is the Vedic fire god wedded to Kali. Now understand Kali is a Hindu goddess in which you would see Beyonce doing her dance of death in one of her videos. You will see on Beyonce's video, she has on a looks like a black T-shirt and you'll see Kali written on it. But instead of having an I at the end, you will see an, the letter E. So this fire god wedded to Kali under her name Ambika, which means little mother. She represented the primal ocean of blood from which all things arose at creation. He, Agni, represented the fructifying fire from heaven, in other words, lightning. Their combination meant vital heat. Vedic sages said the soul of all the universe moving in still is made of a combination of blood and fire. Agni also appeared to consume sacrifices that were burnt on their altars. He was a prototype of such Indo-European fire bringers such as Lucifer, Prometheus, Etana, Hephaestus and Hercules. So did the Israelites come together and celebrate Palm Sunday? No. Did Ha Mashayak and his disciples Lamad make plans for Palm Sunday? No. Wrong again. Did Apostle Paul ever make 
any special plans for Palm Sunday. Again, that is incorrect. Israel, Yashara Al, came together to honor Kabad, the Passover, Ha Pasach. And that is the correct answer. They did not come to gather to honor the tradition of the Palm Sunday. They came to honor Pasach. Let's go back to our foundational scripture, which is John chapter 12, verse 12 through 19. Verse 12 says on the next day, much people that were come to the feast when they heard Shema'i, that means listen with intelligence, Shema'i, that Yahawashai Ha Mashayak was coming to Jerusalem, Yara Shalom. And so the next day, as the scripture says, that much people that were come to the feast, Israelites all around is coming to Pasach. And so a great multitude of Israelites pressed into Yara Shalom, which is Jerusalem in ancient Hebrew, Quadam Ibar, to honor Kabad, the Passover. And Josephus, who is a notable Hebrew historian of that day, estimated that over two million people were involved in the great Passover feast. It is known that 256,500 lambs were slain at one Passover, Pasach, and that each lamb represented at least 10 Israelites. So let's go to the wars of the Jews or history of the destruction of Jerusalem by Josephus. It reads, nobody durst do so much as send an embassage to him against Florus. But when he was come to Jerusalem upon the approach of the feast of unleavened bread, the people came about him not fewer in number than three millions these besought him to commiserate the calamities of their nation and cried out let's go to the footnote of this it reads here we may note that three million of the jews were present at the passover a.d 60 Five. Now, this is after the death of Ha Mashayak, which confirms what Josephus elsewhere informs us of that at Passover, a little later, they counted 256,500 Pascal lambs, which at 12 to each lamb, which is no immoderate calculation come to three million and seventy eight thousand let me read that again here we may note that three millions of jews were present at the passover a.d 65 and this is well after the death burial and resurrection of ha mashayak which confirms what josephus elsewhere informs us of that at passover A little later, they counted 256,500 Pascal lambs, which at 12 to each lamb, which is no immoderate calculation, come to 3,078,000. So all of these people, All of these people, almost three million people, they are coming together to honor the law of the Pasach, the law of the Passover. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord, Yahweh Elohim, thy God, in the place which he shall choose in the feast of Unleavened bread and the feast of weeks and in the feast of 
tabernacles and they shall not appear before Yahweh Alahayim empty. So we see in this text, it is law. It is mandatory for all the men along with their families to travel far and near to Jerusalem, Yarashalam, and honor the Passover. So they were doing this prior to the birth of Ha Mashayak and after the death and burial and resurrection of Ha Mashayak. Because again, you see here, this is 65 AD that Josephus highlights, which is uh, 30, almost 30 years after the death, burial, and resurrection of Ha Mashayak. And there's no mention of Palm Sunday. So when they heard Shammai that Yahweh Shai was coming to Yarah Shalom, verse 13, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Quara, Hosanna, blessed Barak is the king, Ha Malak of Israel, Ha Yasharaal, that cometh in the name Hasham of the Lord, Yahweh Alahayim. So they took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried Hosanna. So let's deal with the Greek definition of Hosanna. It means, O oh, save, Hosanna. Now, here you see on your screen, it tells us that Hosanna is of Hebrew origin. It consists of two words, Yasha or Yasha I and Na. Na means O. Oh. So it says an exclamation of adoration. So again, Hosanna is the combination of two Hebrew words. The Hebrew word Yasha'i, or some would say Yasha, and Na. So let's deal with the Hebrew word Yasha'i. It means to be open. It means to be free, to be safe, to free or secure. Avenging. Defend, deliver, deliver, help, preserve, rescue, be safe, bring salvation, having salvation, save, savior, get victory. And so let's deal with the Hebrew definition of the word na. And we're going to tie both of them together. It says a primitive participle of incitement and entreaty, which may usually be rendered, I pray, now, then, added mostly to verbs or to interjections, occasionally to an adverb or conjunction. I beseech, in other words, pray, thee, in other words, you, to go, now, oh, that's some of the expressions that's associated with this word, Hebrew word, na. And so they took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna. Let's bring this together. In other words, what the people, what they were crying out, they were crying out, oh, save me. Oh, rescue me. Oh, help me. Oh, deliver me. Oh, preserve me. This is what they're crying out. But we're going to take it a step further. Blessed is the king. This is what they also cried out. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Yahweh Alahayim. Blessed Barak is the king. Ha Malak of Israel. Yasharaal that cometh in the name Hasham of the Lord, Yahweh Alahayim. So let's go to 
the 118th book of Psalms, verses 25 and 26. Let's go ahead and give you biblical confirm confirmation. Let me give you biblical confirmation. Let me confirm what I just pointed out to you. All right. So this is what they were actually crying out. This is what they were singing. Not only did the people cry Hosanna, they were actually again shouting the 118th book of Psalms, verse 25 and 26. Verse 25, save now, I beseech thee, Ana'ah, oh, na'ah, and understand, na'ah, where it says, oh, na'ah, or where it says, oh, na'ah, it means, please, take it a step further, not just saying, oh, as an expression, it's also saying, please, so let me read it again, save now, I beseech thee, Ana ah, oh, na ah, in other words, please, Yahweh, Lord, Yahweh, oh, na ah, Lord, Yahweh, I beseech thee, ah, na ah, send now prosperity. Let me read it again. Save now, I beseech thee, ah, na ah, oh, na ah, Lord, Yahweh, oh, na ah, Lord. Yahweh, I beseech thee, ah, na, ah, send now prosperity. Now, this is not referring to money. Prosperity in this text means to move forward. Okay, so save now, I beseech thee, O Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Now, let me read this text in ancient Hebrew, Quadam Ibar. This is how it reads. Ana'a Yahawa, Hawa Shai Aya, Na'a, Ana'a Yahawa, Ha, Tazalai, Ka, Na'a. The Hebrew word for save now is Hawa Shai Aya. The Hebrew word for save now is Hawa Shai Aya. That is the Hebrew word for save now. Why is this important? Why is this Hebrew word important? How are shy I are? Why is this word important? Let me give you another important Hebrew name that means save now. Let me give you another Hebrew name that means this. So let me move this around on your screen here. Let's. Remove the ha and the ya. Let's slide the aya over. Let's bring the connector over. And as you see, it reads hawa shy. It means deliver, save now, salvation. Hawa shy. Some will pronounce it hawa shy. All right. So hawa shy. Deliver, save now, salvation. So let me give you some biblical confirmation of the name Hawa Shai. Let's go to Numbers chapter 13, verse 16. And it reads, these are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Oshea, in other words, Hawa Shai, the son of Nun, Jehoshua. So Hosea, Hawashai, the assistant to Masha, name was changed. His name was changed. And understand, there is a tenderness and destiny and the fact that this points to a close father-like relationship between Masha and Hawashai. His destiny is also seen in the fact that Masha changed his name, Hawashai, to Yahawashai. Let me reiterate this again, and I'll say it in both the English transliteration and the ancient Hebrew. His destiny is also seen in the fact that Moses, Masha, changed his name, Hoshea's, in other words, Hawashai, to Joshua which is actually Yahweh 
Shai. By changing his name, Moses, Masha, was pointing the people to Joshua, Yahweh Shai, as a future leader of Israel, Yashara Al. So what's the significance of this name, this new name that Moses, Masha, had given Joshua? What is the significance of this name? Let's go to Acts chapter 7, verse 45, and I'm going to give you confirmation here. It reads, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God, Yahweh Allahim, drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of Dawad. Now, this is Stephen addressing the Hebrew leaders inside the temple. So it says again, our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus. Let me make it clear here. Let me make it clear. Let me open your eyes to some of you that may not know this. This verse is referring to Joshua, Yahweh Shai, Joshua, the successor to Masha. And not ha ma shayak. All right. So this scripture that I highlighted is referring to Israel, of course. And Stephen is giving a summary, a synopsis of what Yah had done for his people. But in this text, it's not referring to ha ma shayak. It is referring to Joshua, the son of of none, the successor to Masha. And because of this, now we see that Yahweh Shai is the actual Hebraic name for Ha Mashayak. They had the exact same name. So let's deal with the Greek definition of Jesus. Iesus. Let's deal with this name. Iesus of Hebrew origin. Jesus, an example, Jehoshua, the name of our Lord and two other Israelites. And it has the transliterated name again, Jesus. So the Greek definition, Iesus, is a transliteration of the Hebraic name of our Ha Mashayak, which is Yahweh Shai. So the Greek name Jesus, Iesus, is a transliteration of the Hebrew name of our Ha Mashayak, which is Yahweh Shai. So let's go back to this verse here. This is really important for you guys to grab hold of. Verse 25 of the 118th book of Psalms. It says, save now. How a shy I ah, I beseech thee. I na ah, O Lord, na ah, Yahweh. O Lord, na ah, Yahweh. I beseech, ah na ah, send now prosperity. So the people were singing, Yasha I. Nah, when we see it here, they were actually singing how a shy I ah, how a shy I ah, how a shy I ah, na ah, ah na ah, Yahweh, na ah, ah na ah, Yahweh. They were singing, help us. They were singing, they were pleading, Yahweh shy, save us. They were crying out in the proper name of Ha Mashayak, which is Yahweh Shai, which means save us. So verse 26, verse 26, blessed be he that cometh in Ba'a the name Sham of the Lord. Yahweh, we bless Barak you out of the house of by Yath of the Lord, Yahweh. Let me read it again. Blessed be Barak, he that cometh in, by ah, the name Sham of the Lord, Yahweh, 
We have blessed you, Barak Atha, out of the house by Yath of the Lord, Yahweh Alahayim. So the question is, why were they so excited? Why was these Israelites so excited? Verse 14 gives us the answer. And Yahweh Shai, when he had found a young donkey, sat there on as it is written. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh sitting on an donkey. And keep in mind, I do not like referring to these words here because I believe that that is a perversion of our text. So I'll just say the Hebrew word here, sitting on an kamawar ayar. Verse 16, these things understood not his disciples, Lamad, at first. Wait a minute. It's saying here that initially the disciples they didn't catch on to it. Everyone else caught on to the excitement. Everyone else caught on to uh, who Christ. Everyone else caught on to Ha Mashayak being spoken of. They all caught on to what was going on except for the disciples. Let me say this again. The disciples were the last one to fully understand what was taking place. The people understood before the disciples understood. And oftentimes that is the case. Many leaders tend to be the last ones to fully grasp and understand the magnitude of certain things that are taking place. So these things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Yahawashai was glorified, Kabad, then remembered they that these things were written. Now that now it came as they start taking everything in, then they began to fully understand, taking everything in. It, and it says here, then remembered they that these things were written. These things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. When Yahawashai was Kabad glorified, then remembered they that these things were written. They were celebrating. The reason why all of Israel was excited is because they were celebrating the fulfillment of a written prophecy. They understood that Yahweh Shai is fulfilling prophecy. That's why it's no coincidence when they were shouting, Save now. Hosanna, in other words, they were shouting out actually Yahweh Shai Ayah. That's what they were actually shouting. Yahweh Shai Ayah. That's what they were actually shouting. They were celebrating again the fulfillment of a written prophecy. Now let's go to this biblical prophecy. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. And it reads: Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, Quara, O daughter of Jerusalem, Yara Shalom, behold, thy king, Malak, cometh unto thee. He is just, in other words, righteous, Tazarak, and having salvation, Yashai, lowly and riding upon an Kamawar, riding upon an Kamawar, and upon a Colt, Ayar, the fowl of an Athan Wath. Zechariah in this text is encouraging all of Israel to rejoice because our king, our Malak, is going to come, is going to restore hope, is going to restore value, going to restore heritage of his people, which is Israel, Yahshara'al, was celebrating our long-awaited Savior, our long-awaited Hamashayak. So let's go back to our foundational scripture, John chapter 12, verse 17. And it reads, the people, therefore, 
that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead bear record. So within this multitude, there were those who witnessed HaMashiach raising Lazarus from the dead. They confirmed and became witnesses to HaMashiach's authority. They were, as HaMashiach were considered, good ground. Aratiza Tawab or Adama Tawab. Adama, the ground. Aratiza, the earth. Tawab means good. All right. So they were good ground. They were Adama Tawab or Aratiza Tawab. So let me give you some biblical confirmation on the multitude. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 3 through 8. And it reads, But other fell into good ground. And brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. And so we see here that good ground, Tawab, Adama, or Aratiza, we see that they bore witness of what? The seed falling into what? Good ground, which is our heart. Our heart is that soil. Labab, that soil. Our heart is that ground. Aratiza or Adama, this good ground bore witness of Yahweh Shai, bore witness of the sower. See, many of the Israelites were sincere. They believed on Hamashiach. Let's go back to our foundational scripture, John chapter 12, verse 18. For this cause, the people also met him, for they heard that he had done this miracle. Many among the multitude were simply sightseers wanting to be where the people were and where the action was. They were chasing the excitement. Let's go back to biblical confirmation of the multitude. Matthew chapter 13, verse three through seven, verse three. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Verse 5, some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of the earth. Verse 6, and when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root. They withered away. Verse seven, some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them. So let's tie all of this together. Those who are promoting Palm Sunday are those that fell by the wayside. They are those that are in that stony place. Those who enjoy being among the thorns. They are comparable to the Pharisees that are highlighted at the beginning of this lesson. Those Pharisees that were taking tradition and enforcing it as if it is law. The Pasak has everything to do with Hamashiach. Let me say this again. Palm Sunday is a tradition that was created by man. It is a tradition that was created not even by the actual Israelites, but it was created by converts. It was created by converts. So again, these leaders who are promoting Palm Sunday, they are the on the surface people who have no depth and are not rooted in all of the word, they are suffocated with the doctrines of man. Palm Sunday is a tradition. The Passover, Ha Pasak, it is law. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to this lesson here. I want to encourage everyone again to hit your like button, subscribe to the channel, and also click on that notification button so that way you get all the updates of the videos that we may upload or go live with.